All the news, NAP helicopter crashes in Niger State. Nigeria Labour Congress threatens fresh indefinite strike over petrol price increase. And NEMA issues flood warning says 19 states likely to experience heavy rainfall in August. Many thanks for joining us on News Now. I am Simisola Adigun. A Nigeria Air Force MI-171 helicopter, a casualty on a casualty evacuation mission, has crashed near Chukuba village in Niger State. NAF spokesman Edward Capquet confirmed the accident in a statement on Monday. The accident happened at about 1 p.m. and the number of persons on board or their state remains unknown. On February 22, 2021, seven NAF personnel on their way from Abuja to Mena, the Niger State capital, died when their plane crashed after takeoff from the Inamdi Azikiwe International Airport. The Nigeria Labour Congress NLC has threatened to proceed on a total, comprehensive and indefinite nationwide shutdown of the country if there is another increase in the pump price of petrol from the existing 670 naira per litre, which it describes as illegal. This followed reports that oil marketers have hinted on plans to increase the pump price of petrol from the present rate to between 680 naira per litre to 720 naira per litre in the coming weeks, should the dollar continue to trade at between 910 naira and 950 naira uh, per dollar at the parallel market. This is coming barely 10 days after the NLC and the Trade Union Congress, TUC, suspended its nationwide protest and industrial action over the removal of fuel subsidy following a meeting with President Bola Tinubu. The organized labor also warned the federal government against undermining the union's demands. The number of working poor is increasing daily in our continent. Our people are dying in great numbers. It is our duty to roll it back by our collective action. Nigerian workers will not give any notice if we have not addressed the consequences of the last two increases and we wake up from our sleep to hear that they have tampered with it again, prices. They have started floating ideas of a likely increase in the pump price of petroleum products. The National Emergency Management Agency, NEMA, has said 19 states and 56 communities across the country are likely to witness heavy rainfall that can lead to flooding within the month. Ibrahim Fariloy, the Lagos Territorial Coordinator of NEMA, said this in a statement on Monday in Lagos. NEMA's warning comes following a recent prediction of three days of cloudiness, rainfall and thunderstorms across the country by the Nigerian Meteorological Agency, NIMET. And to party matters now, the Labour Party's National Working Committee has officially inaugurated its caretaker committee for the 20 local government areas in Lagos State. At the event which took place over the weekend, the party's members also unveiled its 2023 flagship project. Speaking during the ceremony tagged Equal Opportunity and Social Justice, the national chairman of the Labour Party, Julio Sabore, urged the new inductees to use their status as a means to drive the success of the party as well as work towards the development of the country. This next report has more details. The march done of the Labour Party in the just-concluded 2023 general elections is no doubt unprecedented, considering that the party came from obscurity to gain popularity. This has been described by many as a revolutionary movement that captured the heart of the youths and many Nigerians yearning for a change. Drawing from his impressive performance, the Julius Abure led fashion has commenced the process of creating structures which will help to reinforce his national identity. To kick start this process, the party has inaugurated a 16 member caretaker committee for each of the 20 council areas in Lagos State. While thanking party members for their hard work, the 2023 presidential flag bearer of the Labour Party, Peter Obi, charged the escorts on loyalty and dedication. He said the return of Nigeria from consumption to productive nation remains the only way forward. 
urge you not to relent. Remain peaceful, but remember the still work that we are doing. The still work. Today in Nigeria, things are difficult. Nobody is buying bread cheaper. Even if your brother is in government, bread is not cheaper for you. Nobody is buying food cheaper. Nobody is buying anything cheaper. We are all suffering. They spend everywhere in Nigeria. And it is important we know our work is not finished. A party chieftain and one of the adoptees, Utomi, commended the state executive for their resilience, despite the leadership challenges rocking the party. He said the committee will focus on service to humanity. It's the role that political parties play. And the role that political parties play, unlike what we've seen in Nigeria, is identifying the people's desires of government, creating the structures that enable that to be translated into policy and that orients the identification of people who have the capacity to move those ideas to a change of the way of life of a people. On our part, the Lagos State Labour Party Chairman Dayo Ekong, who charged the ESCOs in good presentation in their various constituencies, urged them to discharge work for the growth of the party. It is not about title. For service to unto humanity. Oh, yes. That's what we are talking about. Service to the people and to all our local government chairmen. It is for them to be concerned about the people, to be concerned about the environment. Currently, the Labour Party has won eight senatorial seats and 34 in the House of Representatives and it just concluded federal legislative elections, making it the third most popular party in the 10th National Assembly. Tamilore Akinkwole, TV 316, Nigeria. Nigerian youths have been called upon to obtain green culture in creative ways, not only on electricity generation but also solar generation. The call was made by the United Nations Resident Coordinator in Nigeria, Mathaya Smale, at the 2023 International Youth Day, co-organized by the United Nations Information Center and Strategy for Mentoring Initiative and Leadership Empowerment, SMILE. Speaking on the theme, Green Skills for Youth Towards a Sustainable World, Shmale charged government, the private sector and civil society groups to encourage entrepreneurship among the youth towards green economy. He also urged companies to do more to provide employees with the necessary skills for the green transition and create opportunities for young people to learn on the job. On her part, the convener of Smile Pink Pay, Bangboshe Martins, urged adults in various industries to be intentional about supporting the dreams of youths. As we call it, skills that will allow them to take jobs that will move the economy towards a green economy. And it is not just things like solar energy specialists. It could be, for example, a fashion designer that uses recycled material to design new fashion. So there's a whole range. We are looking today at the opportunities, the enormous opportunities that exist for young people to gain and obtain green skills because they almost for sure will find jobs. The role of the youth is to identify the problem that irks them that they want to solve. I said in my speech that whatever problem you see that irks you is the problem you are called to solve. You cannot wait for the resources, all the resources to come to you. As you journey forth solving the problems, you attract the resources that you need. More importantly, the people and then the material resources, the men and the material will come to you. Nigerian youth out there, I would say don't lose hope. My call is to the government to you know, create an enabling environment, but my call is much more to individuals that don't think they matter. Because I didn't think I mattered. I didn't think whatever we're doing would help them. So I, we are advocating through our Youth Lovers Tribe to ask more adults to please invest in this, within their sphere of influence, whether it's in your office, to invest and be very intentional about supporting the dreams of our youth.
Once again, young people in Nigeria and Africa have been called upon to invest their time in self-development, most especially in product development and marketing. This call was made at the major edition of Dive 2023 Tagged Product Leadership Conference, where world-class product leaders converged to speak to the Nigerian youth about product, marketing, and development. Speaking at the event, the countries, the Organizers said the country needs to churn out more product managers, adding that it will help youths emerge as skilled product managers and developers. If you can build for Nigeria, where some people don't have a data connection, where sometimes people don't have a smart, a fast phone, where the needs are very nuanced, where the infrastructure sometimes isn't there, you actually have trained yourself to build for a very complicated use case. And so when products that are built here, I believe, can easily scale globally. And a product manager who learns to build here is almost like, you know, you're learning to play football without football shoes, right? So when they give you shoes, you're going to be flying. So I actually think that, you know, the Nigerian product manager and me having started, I started doing product management not knowing I was a product manager. I was doing product management, um, supporting apps and um, some of the platforms that I worked at at Tisalat. And I didn't realize it was product management until I discovered what product management was. I was like, oh, okay, so I've actually been doing product management for a while. And we believe in promoting the culture of trying to groom and grow uh, product managers in our ecosystem. If you notice, all the technology conferences, all the conferences that have actually existed before now in Nigeria have primarily been driven at engineers and very technical. This is one of the first in its kind and we believe that supporting projects like this will help to, you know, encourage individuals to get into product management. So this conference is converging brilliance of people in different parts of the world to come teach Right, and we are learning from them on how we can use technology to indeed solve problems, starting first from our loca locality and then expanding to the rest of the world. We'll take a break here, but still to come, Neymar agrees move to Saudi club Al Hilal. We'll bring the details of the story and others when we return. Do stay with us. are free, facts are sacred, but truth is universal. How in practical terms can we, for instance, de-escalate the tension? The president must see himself as the president of the Federal Republic. We know where the enemy is. Three places. Um, the Lake Chad Basin, the border area between Nigeria and Cameroon, and then the Sambisa Forest. On DG360, we give you a complete dose of everything. Opinion, facts and undiluted truths. I have not believe what politicians say in this uh, part of the world. A new Nigeria is possible, a future is possible. We delve into the issues, dissect it so that you can understand it, use it to take action. I don't think there's any need for any governor to look for grant for ranching. DG360, dissecting the issues. Welcome back. Now here's a recap of some of our top stories tonight. A Nigerian Air Force MI-171 helicopter on a casualty evacuation mission has crashed near Chukuba village in Niger State. NAF spokesman Edward Gapquet confirmed the accident in a statement on Monday. The accident happened at about 1 p.m. and the number of persons on board or their state remains unknown. We also told you that the Nigeria Labour Congress, NLC, has threatened to proceed on a total, comprehensive and indefinite nationwide shutdown of a country if there is another increase in the pump price of petrol from the existing 617 Naira per litre, which it describes as illegal. This followed reports that, the, that oil marketers have hinted of plans to increase the pump price of petrol from the present rate to between 680 Naira per litre and 720 Naira per litre in the coming weeks should the dollar continue to trade between 910 Naira and 950 Naira per dollar at the parallel market. 
Now, in case you missed any of our news bulletins or for more updates, you can catch us on Limex World TV or log onto our website on www.tv360nigeria.com. You can also follow us on our social media platform on Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube at TV360 Nigeria. On Facebook, we're at TV360 Online. In the last three years, we have built a multi-purpose center, which is the envy of all in our constituency. And I can tell you that the people who are living there are already enjoying it. Guy, do you think what this man just said is true? See, I seriously doubt. I'm sure it's one of those that are silly lies. And wait, do you know there's a way to find out if this thing he's saying is true or not? Ah. This is the Construct app. It gives people like us a sure way to track implementation of constituency projects. It gives valid and verified information on location of projects, amounts allocated, amounts funded, the level of job done, and even the profiles of concerned legislators. You and I can post directly on this app. Are you serious? This is the go-to app if you want to know how our commonwealth is being expended by the government. Wow. Let's even see if what this man said is true. Show me. The Construct app is developed by other people in Nigeria with support from USAID and is available on both Google Play Store and Apple Store. Eh, that is true. <laughs> of course, I told you. Hello and welcome back. Mary Kano is on standby with Business News. Over to you now, Mary. Many thanks, Mr. Lea. Welcome to Business News. The decline in the value of the Naira is worrying. The Naira plunged to a record low of 950 Naira to a dollar on the black market as demand for foreign currency outstrips supply. The figure represents a 5.9% depreciation compared to 897 Naira it traded on August 7, 2023. While the decline in forex supply from export earnings, foreign investment, foreign aid and external loans is to be blamed, experts say President Tidibu's policy to unify the exchange raised by floor to the Naira has not failed. The policy was implemented to like drive um, falling attrition into the Nigerian space, to just like um, improve foreign um, portfolio and foreign direct investments in the Nigerian space. However, foreign investors are still quite, let's say, tepid, and they are still quite uncautious in entering the Nigerian ecosystem because of the volatility in the market and also the economic condition of the market. So when we are not getting enough foreign inflows and the outflow that we are getting is significantly higher than the inflow is a major factor is a major issue that has been that has been part of the reason that have been causing the naira depreciation but is it safe for us to say that the policy is not working right, right now i'll say it is too early and um, we are still in the process of seeing um how the change is going to like work out we'll take a break now and return with a review of the stock market stay with us Investors have taken long positions on stocks with bagging hunting opportunities and so the Nigeria equities market kicks off the new week on a negative note, shared in 157 billion naira as investors sold mostly the shares of Eterna and Sunu Assurance. Now, according to a decrease from preceding day's highs, we see the all-share index and market capitalization decline to 65,210 basis points and 35.4 trillion naira. The bear dominated today's activity 
Visa's 22 equities recorded gains against 24 losers, leaving market breath negative. Now, still on a negative note, today's data shows a 47% decline in volume, 50% decline in turnover, but 2% improvement in deals. Now, for this new week, majority of companies on the NGX have released their 2023 second quarter financials, and analysts say they expect mixed investor sentiments towards the market. On the global scene, now, these stocks are having a bad trading day as worries have mounted over China's economic recovery and also its death-laden property markets. But that's the stock market report. Sim Salah, back to you. Thank you very much, Mary, for the update. And on the global scene, the African Union, AU, has held a meeting on the crisis in Niger following the coup on July 26 that toppled President Mohamed Bazoum. According to the Pan-African body in a post on X, formerly known as Twitter, the AU's Peace and Security Council meets to receive an update on the evolution of the situation in Niger and the efforts to address it. According to the AU, the meeting is taking place at the AU headquarters in the Ethiopian capital, Addis Ababa. On Sunday, Niger's military regime vowed to prosecute the democratically elected Basum for high treason and slammed ECOWAS for imposing sanctions on the country. Basum and his family have been held at the president's official Niamey residence since the coup. And in sports, Brazil superstar Neymar Jr. is set to be the latest big-name footballer to move to the Saudi League after he agreed to a two-year deal to join Al-Hilal from French giant Paris Saint-Germain. The former Barcelona striker will undergo his medicals after agreeing to a lucrative deal to join Al-Hilal and he is expected to complete the move within the next 48 hours. According to reports, PSG are set to receive up to £86.3 million for the Brazilian player. The club paid a world record-breaking £200 million for Neymar's transfer from Barcelona in 2017. Still in sports, young girls in the Assisa Toshuala Academy have been trained in football techniques both in the professional and basic levels. The training, which took place at the Abaiti Barracks Peach in is geared towards improving education and sporting literacy for teenage girls. Speaking during the football training and coaching in Lagos, the founder of the academy, Assisa Toshuala, says the initiative is aimed at empowering and giving teenage girls opportunities through football and vocational skills acquisition. I just feel like I want to give opportunity to these kids. Um, I want to help them um, achieve their dream and also be hopeful. Um, though they don't necessarily have to be professional soccer players, to be honest, uh, but I feel like if a kid pick interest in something and they're good at it, I think um, the most you can do for them is to support them and to help them to develop their skill, which is what we do here. We help um, these younger kids to, um, to just believe in whatever they, they, they want to do. You know, this is football, but other sports as well in life. You know, we're just guiding them through life because here it's not just about football. We have some educational things. We also teach them also about life and skills and all of that. So it's just a general thing. I want to see myself higher after the academy. I want to play Europe. I want to play all over the world. I want to be one of the best, like Aziza Oshwala. It has been it has been good so far, and I just I just keep praying for Aziza Oshwala. Whatever she's doing to us, we just we God just keep blessing her because she's doing a lot. Because academy is very. Very right, one of the best, like the best in Nigeria. So I think it's very good. Well, that's all on the news this evening. Many thanks for watching. I am Simisola Adigo. Bye for now.